name is Tom Miller, and we're here today to discuss stairs with Cutter Woodworking uh, in Borden, Indiana. Uh, this is one of a series of videos that we're producing to help you, the customer, understand stairs and to be able to deal with stairs on a daily basis with your customers and on the job sites. One of the first things that we're going to talk about is how you actually do a stair layout. If you're a dealer, quite often the customer comes in and he's got a set of plans and maybe the stairs already laid out, but it doesn't hurt to understand how the stair was laid out, what goes into the layout, and how you can develop a safe and comfortable stair that also meets all of the prevailing codes. Sometimes your customer may or may not be up to date on what is current or may have never built a stair before. So this would help you for, with a beginner and with uh, a more sophisticated contractor who may understand layout but could use some help to avoid problems in the future. We try to lay stairs out in two ways. One, we have to make a stair safe and codes will guide us into stair safety. The other thing that we have to do is to make sure that the stair is comfortable. And there are some general guidelines that we can use in developing a comfortable stair that also meets all of the code and safety requirements. So with that in mind, the first thing that we want to look at is what goes into a stair layout and how does that layout affect the final product. One of the first things we have to understand is there is one fixed dimension in all stairs. And that fixed dimension is the overall height of the stair or what we call the floor to floor dimension. And that can be measured from the floor, from finish floor to finish floor, from rough floor to rough floor, but it is the overall height of the stair. Once the structure is designed and the structure is built, uh, it is very, very difficult to change the overall rise of the stair. So we are basically bound by the rise of the stair in our design work. Within that rise or that overall height of the stair, we can make a lot of adjustments, but we are bound by that rise. So that becomes our guiding principle in developing our stair layout. Uh, for instance, if we have a stair that lays out to be 107 and a half, just as a good unround number. How do we lay out a stair that will fit a floor to floor dimension of 107 and a half? And what will we be designing when we design that stair? I drew back here on the board a triangle, and if you look at the sample here and you look at that triangle, you see that they are amazingly similar because they're exactly the same thing. Most stairs, in fact, virtually all stairs, are a series of triangles, and if we can understand those triangles and their relationship uh, to each other and to the dimensions of the stair, we can understand everything we need to know about a stair. So for that stair of 107 and a half inches, we can do a layout in roughly 30 seconds that will tell us the basics of that stair and what's gonna go into it. To do that, we need to divide the overall height of that stair. In other words, that whole vertical distance. We need to divide that up into sections that a human being can use. Generally, we will use as a guideline for math, and this is math with no math involved. Uh, eight inches as our guide for the height of each one of these segments of the stair each one of these individual rises. So in our 107 and a half inch stair, we are going to divide it up into eight inch segments to start our layout process. At 107 and a half divided by eight, we get about 13 and a fraction rises in a stair. Now we can't build them fractionally because that would be uncomfortable and unsafe. And remember our goal is to design a stair that is both safe and comfortable. So we can't do 13 on a fraction rises, so we're going to do 14 rises. Now that tells us a lot of things about our stair. We're gonna do 14 rises, which means that we're gonna take this horizontal distance, or this vertical distance rather, and we're going to divide it into 14 even increments of eight inches or less. 
the guidelines that are in effect in most areas today, especially in the Midwest where we're located, uh, maxes this out at seven and three quarter rather than eight inches. I use eight inches for the exercise simply because it requires less math and you don't have to do fractions. So dividing it out means that we come up with 13 and a fraction risers, individual risers or sections in our stair, which means that we are going to have 14 equal risers in the stair. If we need to know how tall each of these is going to be in our layout, we can divide it out and we'll know how many there are. That tells us again, 14 sections. That will tell us, because again, we're dealing with a triangle, that will tell us our height here, that's 107 and a half total. That will tell us our height here is eight inches or less. Our run dimension, because of again, current guidelines, will be about 10 inches per tread cut, which is our second dimension. So we have a, a length here of seven and a fraction inches, a length here of approximately 10 inches. That then defines the length of the hypotenuse of this triangle. And in this case, that length of that hypotenuse will generally be 13 inches or less. So simply starting with the height of the stair, the overall height of the stair, 107 and a half, dividing that 107 and a half by eight inches gives us approximately 14 individual sections or risers to the stair. That tells us that we will have approximately 13 treads. Why would we have 13 treads? We'll have 13 treads because we start with a riser on our stair. We have a riser, then a tread, a riser and a tread, a riser and a tread. The last tread is generally the balcony. So we'll normally have in a single flight of stairs one less tread than riser. So if we have 13 treads in our stair, we're going to have 130 inches of run with 10 inches each or more in the segment cut. And those are according to, again, prevailing rules in the Midwest at this point. Uh, most of these rules are guidelines uh, that are fairly consistent across the United States. However,